This video is to go over the topics of somatic hypermutation and affinity maturation. These two topics are interlinked because you do not get affinity maturation without somatic hypermutation. Recall in a previous video that we discussed the five mechanisms of antibody diversity and that four of them were used by both T and B cells, but that somatic hypermutation was only used by B cells and specifically only used by activated B cells. Somatic hypermutation is the process by which mutations are made in the rapidly proliferating B cell within its DNA that encodes for the antigen binding region of the antibodies it will produce. As a result of somatic hypermutation, you will have antibodies with different affinities for the same antigen. And as antigen becomes limiting, the antibodies that have the highest affinity are the ones that will stick around the longest. Therefore, as your immune response is maturing, as we go further into our immune response, our B cells will actually have a higher affinity for the antigen than what they started with. All right, so recall the structure of our antibody. We're gonna work with an IgG antibody here. You have your antigen binding regions here, and these are encoded for by gene rearrangements, largely your VD and J on the heavy chain and V and J on the light chain that have then been added to a constant region. For the um, heavy chain, that constant region is um, FC, or sorry, constant gamma, and for the light chain, it's the constant region kappa or lambda. Now, as we're replicating that B cell in the germinal center, so it's gotten activated, probably hasn't class switched yet, but it could have, but as it's getting activated, you're going to get mistakes because you're going to undergo rapid proliferation, and anytime something replicates really fast, mistakes are introduced, and these mistakes are actually great mutations. So you're going to get random addition of nucleotides, and the only place really that our cells can tolerate these random additions of nucleotides without having either a poor protein expressed or no protein expressed is at the antigen binding sites. The reason is that this is a site that welcomes mutation. So any mutations are really just adding to our diversity. So as long as it's the right size and can be expressed, you're going to get increased diversity here at the antigen binding sites. Now, with that increased diversity, you're going to probably change the affinity of this antibody for its antigen. Will it always be a winner? No. Sometimes you'll change the affinity of the antibody for antigen so much so that it can no longer even recognize its antigen of interest. But occasionally, we make a mutation that actually results in an antibody with much higher affinity than the original antibody that would have been produced by that cell. So remember when we first activate our B cells, we're creating IgM, right? But then once we class switch, we might go to IgG or IgA or IgE, but all of them will have the same antigen binding um, specificity. It's just that it's a different heavy chain class. This FC region, this constant region will change, but our VDJ will stay the same. So really we're talking about these mutations occurring in the lymph node when the B cell is first activated and rapidly proliferating within the germinal center where we could wind up with some changes in this antigen binding domain. Okay, so how exactly does this work? Well, early in the immune response, you're going to have a lot of antigen, okay? And at that point, some of that antigen gets into the lymph node, percolates on down to the outer cortex follicle region, and activates some B cells. One of those B cells gets activated and begins rapidly proliferating. As that B cell is activated, it eventually starts um, differentiating. And let's say it differentiates into an IgG secreting plasma cell. Okay, so we've got IgG from this particular cell, and this IgG is plenty capable of binding antigen. Great. All right, 
But remember, we were replicating this cell really, really fast when it first got activated. And oops, we made a mistake. So now this pink B cell actually is a daughter cell of this black B cell, but it's a little bit different. It made a little bit of a mistake in its antigen binding site. So now, instead of its antigen binding site looking like this, its antigen binding site looks like this, with just a little pink edge on it. But it's okay, because actually, this antibody can also bind antigen really effectively. So we just created more antibodies that are capable of binding antigen. Excellent. So this B cell also begins rapidly proliferating. And guess what? You get another mistake. You're starting to get the picture here, right? So now we've got this blue B cell, which is kind of like its mother cell, and it's capable of binding antigen, but its antibodies are very different from our initial mother B cell. Okay, so as it differentiated, though, it was capable of binding antigen, so it differentiated into an IgG-secreting plasma cell. So now, even though all three of these cells are products of this initial black B cell, they all have slightly different antigen binding sites because of these mistakes made during somatic hypermutation. Okay, so let's assume that our antibodies are doing a great job binding antigen so much so that we're actually removing antigen. So now antigen is becoming pretty limited. And let's say that this third mutation over here in blue had the highest affinity antibodies. Of the three cells that all recognize this green antigen, blue antibody is the best. It binds it the strongest and is doing the best job of binding antigen quickly and efficiently. So that means that when there's less antigen around, really only blue antibody producing cells are going to be stimulated and only they are going to produce antibody. And if only blue antibody secreting cells are being stimulated, well, then the other cells are not going to be stimulated. And without stimulation, B cells die off. And when they die off, we lose the antibodies they produce. But that's okay, because we're left with the cream of the crop. We're left with the B cell that produced the best antibodies that had the highest affinity for antigen. So that means that as our immune response, our B cell mediated immune response to the pathogen matured, we actually wound up with a higher affinity antibody response. And that is the concept of affinity maturation.